Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So in this one, we're gonna actually take a look at installing the Oculus Source branch of Unreal Engine. And what this is, is the version of Unreal Engine that Oculus themselves work on and add features to a different content. And the reason we're gonna do that is because it has access to a whole variety of sample packs that we can use to help develop Oculus applications, which aren't typically involved in or included in the Epic Games Source version. So if I show you here, we've got samples, and then in here we've got a folder called Oculus. You can see that we have a variety of different applications which we can use to learn from and build our apps ourselves. So for example, we've got an example project which is Android permissions. So if you have an issue with that and you wanna save files to the headset, you wanna pull files from it, you can study this to get information. Uh, cloud saves, uh, graphic showcases, so how far you can push the headset even hand samples or hand tracking, that kind of stuff is built in. Locomotion stuff, uh, pass through samples, splash screen example, and UI and touch samples. So basically you get the gist, like this is a beefed up version dedicated to Oculus VR. And that's the reason we're gonna install this now. So we can actually access these files and in the future look at some tutorials on how we can use these and how we can implement them into our own stuff. So before we get started, I just want to say a big thank you to Discord and Patreon, many Patreon for making this possible and helping out with that. If you want to help with these videos and hopefully get some more out this year, which is my main goal, then it would be awesome if you could head over to Patreon. Even just the, the one pound one helps quite a lot. But um, if not, head over to Discord. We're always there hanging out and we're happy to help with anything we can. We've just hit a thousand people in there, so we're going pretty, pretty well. And finally, if you're a business or you're working for a business and you want some help with setting this up or your projects in general, there's an email in the YouTube about page, which you can get in touch with me through, you can get in touch through, and then I'll be able to help you out with that if that's something you need. So with all that cleared, we can jump right in. And the first thing we're gonna do is make sure you guys have an Epic Games account and a GitHub account created. So I've already got these, and the reason we need this is so we can actually access this Git repository. It's locked down, so if you try to log into it by default, so let's do copy, and I'm gonna do an incognito window. You'll see when we log in, we get a 404 error that this page isn't there really. So what you need to do is sign up for a GitHub account. I won't be going through that now. And once you've got this, you wanna head over to your Epic Games account, and in there, you want to find a panel in your settings. So you'll sign up, you'll have your account. You'll then have a tab called Connections. And what you want to do is you want to make your way to Accounts. In here, you'll see here that there is a way to link your GitHub account that you've just created with your Epic Games account. You want to do that and wait for a confirmation email. Once you've got that, you can simply log back into GitHub, make your way to the github.com slash Oculus VR Unreal Engine tree. Link will be down in the description, so don't worry about that. And we can actually go from there to access this. That's pretty much the, the one thing you need to get this. So once you can see this page, we're just gonna make sure we're on 4.27, which is the default. And this will actually be the latest build of this engine. You can also check by going back to the Unreal Engine tab if you went to the samples. And you can see that says it was last edited 26 days ago. So it's more up to date than the Epic launcher version as well. And chances are, if there's any bugs with Oculus or building to the headset, they'll be fixed with this version of the engine pretty fast. Uh, when it first started for the Oculus One, and just as the Oculus Quest 2 hit, it roughly took around a month to get fixes, whereas the Epic launcher was around two and a half, maybe three in some, some situations. So, once we've got this, there's two other programs we need to install. We need to install GitHub, uh, the desktop version, and we also need to install Visual Studio 2019. And um, if you want more information on this, you can actually scroll down and we'll see here we've got get up and running. In part two of this, it says Visual Studio 2017. This doesn't work anymore. This kind of just, this whole readme needs to be updated to be fair. So Oculus, if you're watching this, please please just update that a little bit. And then what we can do is we can go through, we're gonna install GitHub for Windows and we're gonna install Visual Studio as well. So the first thing we're gonna do is actually install GitHub. There's a variety of different ways you could do this. You could do this through the GitHub desktop application 
or a new another program like source tree or through the command line visually see this page what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and install github desktop and uh, rather than open up any of the links we can just let you go to code open with github desktop uh, i don't have it actually installed so this won't work so we're going to hit cancel and if i hold control on the keyboard we can select this link and it'll open up in a new tab download for windows and once this is finished downloading we can go ahead and install it and the reason we're doing this first is because we can let this download in the background while we install Visual Studio 2019. So we're going to open this up. We will then want to sign into our GitHub account again. Now we can always do open GitHub. You see it's already logged me in, which is excellent. And then we can do finish. And in here we can see that we have the ability to add new content. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to clone a repository from the internet. So we're going to select that and we want to select URL. And this will be our location for our code. So if we go to code, we're going to copy this, which is all good. We can open up GitHub again, paste this link in. So we get the Unreal Engine.github. And what we want to do is just set up a local path. So we're going to choose. For this, I always install it to my C drive. It just makes things much easier in the long run, especially if Windows, Unreal, and then Android, which you need to set up to the headset, which we covered in the next video, that all has to be in C drive. If you have it in different locations, it becomes an absolute nightmare to figure out. And in most cases, it just doesn't work. So we're gonna open up C drive. I'm then gonna create a new folder. Oh, I've already got an Unreal source 4.27. So that's just a, an empty folder. And then in here, we want to select it. That's the right one. Unreal Engine 4 source, yep. And it'll install Unreal Engine. And now what we wanna do is just hit clone. So with that downloading in the background, what we're gonna do is we're gonna download Visual Studio. I was planning on downloading Visual Studio 2019, but it looks like they've just updated it to 2022. So we're going to try that instead. So Visual Studio, because if I put 2019, it literally just comes up with 2020. And what I'm going to do is go to free Visual Studio rather than this one. We don't need this many options. And then Visual Studio Community, which is going to hit free download. And you should see that it actually starts downloading Visual Studio Community in the bottom left. So we're going to open this up. I just got a window saying, do I want to accept this? I'm going to say yes. And then we're going to install the Visual Studio installer. While this is running, we can actually minimize these, that window as well. Get still installing in the background also. Now Visual Studio is installed, or at least up and running. What we want to do is we want to set our workloads. So you want to scroll down a little bit and you want to find game development with C++. We're going to tick this. And then in here as well, we want to tick Unreal Engine installer. You do also have Android ID support. So if you want to develop C++ code, for Android and then debug it, you can install this as well. So I'm going to do that. I probably won't be using it. We're going to install Android separately. This isn't the same thing. So with that done, we can actually just hit install. You can see it's 20 gigs. So we're going to install this and it'll probably take a while. So once both of these are finished or if anything pops up, I'll come right back and we'll take a look at it. So we're back. That took about seven or eight minutes for me to complete the Visual Studio install and for GitHub to finish doing its thing. So if we do GitHub quickly, I'm just going to go for my own purpose, hit continue, let that do its thing. So we're all good there. We'll open that up in a minute. And then Visual Studio, we just want to go ahead and sign in to our Microsoft account. I forgot we'd need this, so apologies, but chances are everyone's got a Microsoft account anyway. So, so we've signed in, just going to wait for it to do its thing. And uh, now we've got two windows, we'll close Visual Studio Installer. And now we actually have Visual Studio installed, which means we're all good to go. So what we're going to do is I'm going to close Visual Studio for now. And in GitHub, what we want to do is we want to show in Explorer. So at the minute, we have our Unreal Engine repo sorted, current branch 4.27. You can see here, we can actually select any version that was on the GitHub, but we want 4.27. It'll say fetching upstream if you just switched it again. So we just want to wait for that to finish. But in the meantime, we can just do show in Explorer. And what I'll do is actually open up the file, which it downloaded for us. So you can see here, it contains all of the projects that was installed with GitHub. And this is where we can go through and start setting up our Unreal Engine. This one takes quite a while to complete, so be patient. It's worth it in the end, but it does take quite a while. So in here, what we want to do is we're going to run two files, but we've got to do them in the correct order. So the first one we'll do is setup, and that'll be setup.batch, so Windows batch file, followed by generate project files. So we're going to double click setup. This is a batch file, so this downloads a bunch of content for us, as you can see here. And if you go onto the GitHub, you can actually see it tells us what it's downloading. So uh, run setup.bat, this will download binary content from the engine, as well as installing prerequisites and setting up Unreal file associations. On Windows 8, a warning from Smart Screen may appear. Click more info 
then run anyway to continue. So that's pretty much where we're up to now. A clean download of the engine binary is currently three to four gigs, which may take some time to complete. Subse subsequent checkouts only require incremental downloads and will be much quicker. So we're pretty much up to step four. We've got a couple left to do. Big one really is the generate project files.bat. There's chances that some stuff could pop up in this. We'll deal with that as we get to it. Hopefully we'll be good. If you have any issues up to this point, please head over to the Discord. You can post screenshots of any errors you have and we can pretty much answer in real time. It's easier than just using the YouTube comments for quick communication. So please head over there if you do need any help with this. But for now, I'm gonna let this download and then once it's done, we'll come right back and we'll set up the project generate. So we'll be right back. Okay, so it did its thing. Setup.bat is run completely and we're all good to go. There was no errors or anything like that. Like I said, if you do have any, head over to Discord. But next thing to do is generate project files. So we're just gonna double click this and we'll read through it. So generate project files error, unable to find valid installation of Visual Studio. Please check that you have Visual Studio 2017 or Visual Studio 2019 installed and, and the MS build component is selected as part of your installation. So it looks like we might have missed something. So let's go and open up Visual Studio. We'll still try with 2022. If I need to, I can always change it. So I'm just gonna continue with code. Actually, we're gonna to go to tools, get tools and features. And then we're gonna to go to individual components and we wanna look for MS build. So MS build, we can see it there. So we're gonna tick this, we're gonna add some more stuff. So we will modify and install and hopefully wait for this to finish. So save your work before continuing. Yes, continue. It says it might take a while, but it doesn't look like it's gonna to take too long at all. So it finished and reopened Visual Studio. So I'm just gonna close it again. Uh, we'll leave this. I think that should be enough and let's close that and then try the generate project files again So there we go. So now we've got MS build installed. It's actually setting up our unreal engine 4 project files And like I said, this is where it can take a while I think it actually sets up and unpacks pretty much the entire project and it can be around 80 gigs So all you want to do here is literally just Wait for it to finish. It could take like take a while might take a couple of minutes. Okay, that didn't take long at all I was wrong <laughs> So now we've got that, it'll actually create a UE4 Microsoft Visual Studio project. And this is what we'll open up next to get it all sorted. So now we have our UE4 Microsoft Visual Studio file or solution. So we want to double click this and then open with Visual Studio 2022. Gonna hit okay. So it's asked me, or it's saying target framework not supported. I'm gonna do update. So update the target.net framework 4.8 recommended. Or you can download if you need to. So I'm just gonna continue. And then continue again for the second one. And now we just need to wait for this to load. And you can see here, we've got all of our files are opening up. So before we go ahead and build, we wanna make sure this is selected to developer editor. So development editor, which is why it's by default and Windows 64. Now what we do is we can actually go over to our UE4 engine. So Visual Studio 2019, we can right click and we wanna do build. What that'll do is open up this panel on the bottom and we should then see that it actually goes through and starts building the project for us. So you can see it's taking its time and it's gonna start building basically the engine so we can actually get in there and use it. So once this is finished or if I hit any more bugs or errors, I'll come right back and we'll take a look at them. So I'm back. It took about an hour and a half maybe to actually install all four and a half thousand components. But now that's done, we've got no errors. If you do have errors, remember just head over to the Discord. But what we can do now is we can actually select UE4 Visual Studio 2019. We can right click and then we can go to debug and we can start a new instance. What this should do is actually launch Unreal Engine for us so we can check that it's actually running. And once we've done that, we'll create a desktop shortcut so we can actually access this version of the engine without launching Visual Studio every time we need it. Allow access. This may take a little bit of time as well, especially if it gets caught at 45% because it's just compiling shaders. And they've added a nice little feature so we can see that here. Excellent, so we've got Unreal now open so we can create a new project. And if you remember, I said we've got a bunch of sample projects that are in here that we can use. And to find those, we just gotta to go to more. And you can see here that we've got a whole bunch of different projects that we can actually load up and use. So that is pretty much it for creating a 4.27 Oculus source build of the engine. So you can go through and you can test out those projects or you can simply go to games and then set up virtual, like set up the template or use what it is you still need to as default. So rather than launching this up, I'm going to cancel. We're going to open up our files. So that launched Visual Studio again. 
So we're going to go to local disk C. We're going to find our Unreal Engine source. So Unreal Source 4.27, Unreal Engine. We're then going to go to Engine. Then we want to go to Binaries, Windows 64. Now if we scroll down, we actually want the editor. So it'll be in here somewhere. So let's keep going. And then it's just here, not far from the top. So UE4 Editor. We're going to right click. And then we can actually create a shortcut, which we can put onto our desktop. So now, so now we can actually launch Unreal from here rather than actually launching it from Visual Studio every time. So it just saves a little bit of time. So let's open UE4 Editor, and then we get exactly what we want without launching Visual Studio. So it just saves a little bit of time, and a little bit of like just makes things a little bit easier. While we're here, if you do have an issue trying to build Lightning, it says Unreal Swarm failed to kick off, and you get a warning. What you want to do is you want to open up your Visual Studio project again. So UE4 SLN, which is, I believe what it is, what it comes out as. You want to select that just to open this back up. And then in here, once it's loaded, we're going to use the search bar on the top right hand side where our engine is to search for light mass and hit enter. What we want to do is search Unreal Light Mass, hit enter, and it'll be underneath programs. And then we can simply just right click and we can build this component as well. So once you've done that, your engine should be fully complete and you'll actually be able to access everything you need from there. So that's about it for this episode or this tutorial. In the next video, I'll show how to set up Android Studio so you can build content directly from the engine to the headset. So keep an eye out for that video. Um, thank you so much to all my Patreons for making this possible and allow me to be able to do this. And don't forget to jump over to the Discord if you do need any help. We'll be right there. So yeah, until next time, stay safe and I'll see you then. Bye.